Hey there, everybody. We're here. Tell us if uh, everything's coming through clearly as usual. We are battling the technical difficulties. We got Ben on the line, too. And so I can hear him in my little earbuds here. Ben can say hey, hey everybody. We're show him for a minute here. Good to see everybody out there again. How, how did you get that? What's got... that background you're doing there, Ben? That's uh, uh, pretty bright. You know, I've, been doing, I've been doing some things with my pandemic time here, working on uh, some oh, it's tapestries. And uh, yeah, yeah, I've been yeah. dyeing some tapestries. Uh, that I intend to quilt later on. So yeah, okay. If, nice. if anybody wants to know how to do this stuff, uh, then I have a separate thing that we could talk about that on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot for that, Ben. That's very good. Yeah, yeah. So uh, as usual, Ben is keeping a close eye on the chat so that if you think of things that you want to talk about, the uh, he'll 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 be watching and and we'll be talking about it. Uh, That's right. Put it in there. To, uh, you know, Ganja, we see you. Wings and things. Gian, Debbie, right. Mel, Stardust, all you guys. It's good to see you there. All right, sweet. Thank you for being here. It's good to see uh, the usual, the usual visitors. I'm honored that you take the time out. This was a, a short notice for this live stream as well. So, uh, you know, thank you. I'm, I'm very honored that uh, you're able to take that time out on a late notice. So right away, we've got some things to talk about. Uh, got a question shortly after I sent out the email blast about painting snow and ice. So we won't make the, sh the uh, whole show about it, but I can show you very quickly some helpful tips, painting snow and ice. So while I'm getting set up to do that, you can let me know if you see anything else. Uh, if, if you think of anything else, don't hesitate to uh, just drop it into the chat column there. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a good time to do snow and ice because it's been really cold. I was just looking at the news and there's a bunch of people stuck on the road and some snow and ice. So, uh, you know, let's let's oh, make yeah. a snow and ice wonderland. OK, we're going to do it. Uh, <clears throat> nothing too fancy. OK, so I'm, I'm thinking that what we're going to use and go ahead, Brian, and show the show the paints that I'm that I'm pulling. In. These are my primaries. If I if I was plan you know if i had made an elaborate plan i'm going to do this specific painting and i'm going to show you how to do it i might pre-mix my colors so don't let me give you the impression that it is better to paint straight from bright primary colors like this but uh, it's an easy way for me to quickly demonstrate whatever you want to ask about so if you think of anything else along the way just tell me so i'm getting out red yellow and blue because snow and ice are very similar to sky in a common landscape picture. You know, it's funny. As I'm looking for the right lid as I'm talking, this is the problem that happens when you're multitasking. Well, you know, while you're looking for that lid, uh, Ganja's talking about how they're working on a ice cave mountain painting. Oh, okay. Very good. More specific. I like that. Yeah. Ice. Made me think made me think of your, uh, your beer cave thing that you uh, did once. Did People could that. check out. Nice. So should we yeah, do that? So get real, you know, be as specific as possible. I, I hate when I feel like I didn't do a good job of answering. The, the purpose of this show is to give you good answers. That really is the purpose of this, is to give you good goodness. information. Yeah, goodness. So, well, Anna is here from Niger. So Nice. It's thanks for being here. What? Night, midnight over there. Yeah. Okay. And thanks for being here. There's a lot of ice Anna. in Niger. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to use a lot of blues. Water in mass amounts tends to be blue. You can just look at an outer space photo of the Earth and see that the oceans are pretty blue. So you tend to have a very blue hue. So, so uh, also, just because it looks pretty good, I'm going to use a blue background so let's say we've got a cave right here let's let's start painting on this canvas we're going to put blue i don't want it to be a real brilliant blue so i'll put some black in there and a little bit of white and we're just going to start with a, a shadowy color and then i'll i'll build the walls of a cave into that see i keep this little clippy clip right here so oh, nice. You got the clippy clip. Yeah. Hey, what's up from uh, Missouri, Cheyenne? See you. Uh, Sweet. Rare, art, rare Art Expressions loves your work, Joe. Uh, you know, Eva is Thank glad you. that 
your mural is smaller today. Yeah, we get yeah. something done, right? You know? Yeah. <laughs> About we're not time. doing anything yeah, giant yeah so this is meant to be a shadow and the variation of colors is probably a good thing because you know the imagination fills in blank so while this paint is still kind of globby and wet i just run the brush across it a few times get a background and dude what about what if you did like um like frozen ice blocks floating in ocean water you know like we could uh, do that we could even make frozen ice blocks floating in ocean water yeah, that's going like into a, this cave like polar ice is that. melting and fracturing and, okay you know, okay cool. i'm thinking about what that would look like and then you can put stuff on top of the ice if you want yeah good idea good idea we're gonna make this quick quick version okay so w what i was thinking about just now is that is it what is brighter you know when you're doing water up against something it pays to think what's brighter under the water or over the water and you can you know an experiment i do you would laugh at me if you saw me sitting in my jacuzzi every single day studying the water it ended up being the best thing we ever purchased it's not easy it's being an artist it's not. Somebody's gotta do it. <laughs> you gotta do what you got to do my research I mean, is intensive if you guys want to know how Joe gets the answers, it's deep <laughs> into the hot tub session. It's about gotta, 30 minutes in when the mystery is really revealed. <laughs> you got to get in there. Yeah, it's true. And uh, I was always disappointed in, the, you know, this is way, way off subject. But if anybody knows why this happens, I'd love to hear. I'm always disappointed because my coffee changes flavor. I've tried everything. The second I step outside into the air the coffee has a different flavor i go inside it tastes just like i brewed it just like i want it to i get outside in my jacuzzi that's the one thing that's missing from the ultimate luxury yeah. experience is my coffee and i and i take my coffee out there so that i can sit and think and learn things <laughs> yeah that is what it's for is to sit and think and learn things <laughs> yeah and my coffee yeah. tastes weird anyway this is the point i was getting at I've got a, I've got my empty mug left over from my coffee. I'm looking at it. I fill it with water and I'm looking at, so, you know, if I turn it at one angle, the portion that's filled with water is lighter than the walls of the mug that are not filled with water. And then I turn it at another angle and, and then it's blocking light and it's darker. So, so water doesn't let light escape uh, so easily. So if it's bright outside, we're going to put a bright opening on this cave. We're just going to blast this with white. We got white everywhere. We're just going to put it on here. This is the outside of that cave, okay? And that's because it's bright out there. And so when that light hits the water, it illuminates it. And that illumination goes into the water inside the cave while the cave is blocking a lot of the light. So the end effect is you'll have a water line like I just made here that is actually lighter than the inside of the cave. So, so you know, this has this really magical and unique look because it'll switch. It'll be darker than the snow. I'm just going to grab a little bit of water to make this paint move a, a little better. Okay, it's darker than the lighter snow. But see, the, the brightness of the underwater is more consistent. It doesn't change as, as quickly as it goes because it bounces the light everywhere. It traps it, doesn't let it escape as easily. So it doesn't just get dark. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is that you, Ben? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're working on sound effects. You know, we want to yeah. like try and spice up the live stream. <laughs> Magical. Whenever you say something awesome, yeah. I'm going to. That's good. Oh, maybe in the future we'll get that dialed in. <laughs> <laughs> okay my timing needs work I'll admit. yeah 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 but uh, hey kudos for giving it a shot we like experiments yeah. around here i mean you know the um the frontier of creativity is a dangerous place you know? <laughs> yeah. just tell you me about it. Tell sometimes me about it. it ruins everything <laughs> yeah yep been there done that Hey, let's hear it for all of the people who showed up sick today anyways uh, and are painting. We got a bunch of people who are sick out there. We oh, see you. That's man. We got, we got for, colds going around at my house too, man. I'm telling thanks you. Thanks for painting with us. Uh, yeah, we see you. you. 
it takes a real soldier to to paint with mural joe even when you feel like garbage yeah good job for real that is you know i uh I tend to go on, on the annoyingly scientific side of painting, you know, but that's only, that's only because it helps, it helps me. I think intuition is more powerful than conscious understanding of things, but it helps me retain the information if I have an explanation for why things are, are the way they are, you know, real consistent rules. I say, well, it's like this because this, and then I can remember it. So. I'm only trying to be helpful when I get when I get all technical and explain things a lot. It's not for everybody. I've noticed that not everybody likes that approach. I don't blame you. Well, you, uh, you know, Uncle Sixty says it might help if you stopped tipping your brushes in your coffee. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that happens. That's so, the thing that happens. I didn't I didn't put coffee out this time. Okay, so I'm gradually building this out. You know, I've been painting while we're while we're shooting the breeze here. And on the top, I'm just using a, a gray blue shadow. I just put black in it. And I'm using that to build a cave. I'm making it darkest in the back. And then, you know, I make it get a little bit lighter as it bends out. And I'm just making a gradient. You know, this sharp edge here, this this is to look like there's a wall. So it kind of curves around behind here. So maybe you could take a little kayak back in there. It gets lighter, lighter as it comes out this way. And uh, just just creating a gradient from my gray blue shadows to my pure white in order to get the look of this. This doesn't feel like transparent ice. Yeah, it's not supposed to. this. When you have all this color, it kind of has a translucent like snow that has gotten wet a lot and frozen. It's kind of iceberg kind of a look. There's a lot of light when you put plenty of color in shadows. It creates translucency. So you can see lots of color that my, that blue, that kind of thalo blue that I'm using is very good for creating that uh, translucent look. So, so in its simplest form, you know, let's say this, this is the simple way to quickly produce something that looks snowy is use a very bluish hue. And the phthalo blue is especially good because it turns a little more toward the green as it gets brighter. So you can see that this green, where, where it gets lighter, it has this more turquoise look than it does when I put it on here. I'll just put a blob of this blue right there. See, that doesn't look as turquoise when I put it right there. And then when I, when I start adding the white, I'm just getting rid of my paint. When I start adding the white to it, uh, it, it gets a little more turquoise and that is uh, a valuable pattern when it shifts toward not to green but toward green that's that's a good uh pattern to emulate what water does as it gets illuminated waves you know tropical waves in the sun as they get brighter they turn greener but really i think the most important thing is just that colorful shadow you got a bluish shadow you got white this is the simplest thing so now we'll dig a little bit deeper into some other effects you can do you know we'll put like like you said some big floating ice cubes or something in there we'll go so uh, uh nels believes you may have to change your water chemistry in your hot tub since it sounds like you might be tasting uh the steam uh, yeah, maybe that, maybe which that's is it chorine perhaps maybe too that's chlorine. It. too much oh i forgot to put chlorine in it shoot that reminds me. Yeah. I won't be enjoying learn. it tonight. <laughs> We're gonna learn more about your hot tub yeah. today. today. Again, I say some of my personal life. It's just me. My family's not into it. It's my daily routine. Everybody else is like, eh, eh. Yeah. They're I'm done. A showers. I'm a showers man personally. I like a nice, nice hot shower. You like shower, yeah. Yeah. Well, to be fair, my family does like to enjoy it, just not nearly as frequently. For me, it is the daily routine. You know. But uh, I guess it just doesn't do it for everybody. Soaking in hot water on a cold, snowy day. I just think it's magic. Yeah. We, uh, so let's, I'm going to put in a special request here. If Brian okay. could uh, darken up this camera angle just a touch here. We're, we're losing oh, our highlights. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 So you need the camera to be, you need the image to be darker. Do we got yeah, a little just, bit of overexposure stop it. happening? Stop it. Yeah. Stop it down. Just a touch. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if we can do that. You might. Mm, sorry, this is a 
This camera's a little unfamiliar. Just give me a second. Just give me one second to go fix this. There we go. Hang on, hang on. We got this. It's no problem. Um, we'll go here. Yeah, These are my personal a... cameras, and Brian comes and volunteers his time, so so uh, we're a little bit unprepared here. We're going to go to this button, and then we're going to go up to this. Okay, so tell me, let's put the go. earphones much back better. in. Much better. It says much better. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, sorry, I didn't have audio. Should we go any darker, you think? Yeah, just a little darker still. One notch darker? Yeah, the thing is, you're doing all these lovely highlights. You know, we want yeah, to see Yeah, right. You need to see that. No, I'm glad you said it. We need to get that. Yeah, that's good. That's great. Okay, okay. That's good. Very good. Very good. Okay, back to where we were. Thank you for saying that. Anything else? If anything else comes up, please say so. So uh, I, want, I want to uh, do a good job of showing snow and ice. So we've done kind of packed snow, right? And, and it's very simple to... Just make gradients that get darker, darker, darker as you go going back there. And, and I think that making sure your blue is not overly intense is good. It would, when, when it's overly intense, you get this look that looks like the light shining through it, very icy. When you mute it, so I'm adding some black right now to this, and that's going to mix with the white. So it, a grayer blue looks a bit more like just natural shadow on the surface rather than the light shining through it. So you can control just how translucent it is. But now I'm gonna go a little bit further on this and you know we're gonna put a few little a few little stripes in here. It's getting darker as it goes into our cave. Maybe there's some little edges on this. I don't know. I'm just putting that in there because I've got it on hand. And so it gets lighter as it comes out. Now let's say that you've got sunlight. Let's let's put a direction to to the sunlight okay so uh i i feel already like the light could be passing down this way and so what i can do real quick to i want to show you just how dramatic is the difference between this this more colorful colorful color <laughs> i like speaking in layman's terms you know <laughs> like the, this color is more saturated it, it has more color, to put it plainly. So to make the look of shadow on the surface, this is how I really get the look of icy snow. But, but if I want to make a shadow, okay, I'm going to move this color toward purple by adding this magenta color. Okay, one of my favorite colors to work with, people who come to my workshops, you know, they hear a lot about magenta. You know, something I'm always using. So, hey, let's squeeze in one here from uh, Gonza real quick. Do you no, uh, no. see any problems if he wants to go back and work on a painting he did like a year ago in acrylics? Can he keep working on that? Dude, why not? I don't see why not. Yeah. So, I mean, I get what you're saying. You're trying not, I if, if I understand your motivation correctly, you don't want to be somebody that's obsessed with the past. You don't want to be caught up in old work and, and ruin the original quality it has from your first inspiration, right? You know, so that I, I can understand someone's perspective if they're saying, no, don't go back and rework old stuff. Let it be what it is. But because my priorities are a bit different, I say do it. If, if you feel like there's some extra knowledge to be gained, practice is awesome. You know, practice, there's, there is no substitute. No amount of knowledge can replace good practice. So if you're going back with a fresh perspective on something and you want to do an experiment about what is going to work, then yeah, yeah, go for it. But I say don't frustrate yourself by saying I didn't do it good enough. I'm going to try and do good enough. This I, I don't think you should do that without being on a very specific mission and a specific experiment you're going to try. I go back and rework old stuff all the time. If you look, If you looked around this studio – then you would see that I have paintings all over the walls that are old. I put them up so that I could look at them and, and uh, put some extra brush strokes on them every once in a while. You know, Peggy is noticing uh, how nice that lavender is looking next to the icy blue. Hey, all right. Good, good. Okay, so the difference that I really 
want you to see. We're going to put a ridge right here, okay? So this is going to be like, I got to make it, make a shadow. We're going to go like this. There's this spike going up there. And that is catching the light on, on the right side here. We'll do the same thing here. So we got these ridges, you know, and and so maybe here it's it's just low enough that it's catching the light. So, you know, I don't know if I'm dialing in my shape just perfectly, but what we want is anywhere this color is that creates a shadow on the surface because it's the more purple of the shadow colors that's in this. This one becomes the surface reflection shadows just on the surface. These are light going into the ice and coming out of it. So you can have control over your content in that way. Uh, you can control the, the um, what is the right way to say that? It's the texture of it, you know, how, how much light is shining through or how much, how much it's just on the surface. So I'm gonna put pure white to make it nice and bright here. And then I'll, I'll take my, I'll take my more purpley color and we'll just get a little dab, little, little dab or do right there. And we'll put it right in there with some blue. I'm going to put a, a little nub coming out. You know how sometimes you kind of have a shelf coming out. I just want this to make sense there. Who knows why that's there, you know, but it's just like coming out. Maybe it's a covered up boulder. Maybe some boulder got covered and it's there. So, so this is the way I, I just, this is more of the color you want to use. If you're trying to make the ground, covered with snow and maybe the bushes or trees are casting some shadows maybe just bumps like i made are casting some shadows you want to use a little bit more of a blue influenced by purple if you want to make the iceberg look where light shining through okay i'm being redundant i'm explaining the same thing over and over now so let's go back hey, well here's something fresh uh if you guys want to have your work viewed by joe comments by joe email it right now to info that's it. at muraljoe.com yep. info at muraljoe.com send it on over there we'll pull it up yeah and, don't be uh, shy it's what uh, what uh thoughts or, or areas that you'd like comment on be sure to put that in there too yeah and i promise info. i won't make fun of your work i won't do that it might be better than my work i'll just i'll just give you my honest Feedback. Really, I like it best if you ask something specific. So maybe we can add that. Uh, if you can think of some specific, uh, not not too lengthy. It's hard to uh, put Ben on on the duty of reading paragraphs. <laughs> you know, so oh, good read though. I mean, it's just you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe not too much. I don't know if I'm that. I'm I'm not like uh, what was that guy that does all the voiceover? Uh, uh, never mind. I'm no voiceover artist. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, we love it. We love it if you uh, send in those works. Okay, same thing. I'm just creating a gradient because I want to see a water line. Look, it's darker here because this is in the bright daylight. The water's lighter than the ice here because it's in the shadow. So immediately I can have the look of water in, in comparison to the ice by understanding that pattern. Everything I do is just recognizing patterns. We producing them, uh, you know. I I I think that it is extremely empowering as as a creative person to have the understanding of the patterns to manipulate. I I used to think I really used to think that the ability to draw and paint was something that a person needed to be born with, and they did it well from the start or didn't do it at all. I really thought that. Now I couldn't be further from that opinion. And I respect you if you think otherwise. I understand, you know, this is, uh, you know, this is something still, still debated a lot. But what I've seen understanding of patterns do for my work, I'm convinced that it's just the hours put behind very directed practice. And make it work, it's magic for you. So okay. Mary C is curious about cleaning the painting. Uh, do you have any experience with that? So explain to me what cleaning a painting is, because I'm not sure what well, you mean cleaning a painting. She says, she says, how would Joe clean the surface of a dirty of a dirty painting? Oh, literally clean it, like pull out the vacuum cleaner and suck the dirt off of it. I mean, like if it's super <laughs> dirty. I mean, like if somebody threw a bunch of mud at your painting, sure. That, 
Well, yeah. I think she's probably referring to like uh, like restorative. You know, like maybe after. Yeah, yeah. Okay, years. okay. If we're wrong about that, then tell us. Or if you're yeah. a cigarette smoker, maybe. <laughs> you yeah, right. Clean, right. Clean I got it. Baby. I got it. Okay. No, Ganja. No, I don't. I yeah. Don't. I'm a musician and a filmmaker, a photographer, but not a painter. Oh, That's man. Yeah, but Ben, he's not a painter, but he can paint. Let me tell you, he can paint. We've got yeah, some I old did pieces. I did when I was. He has, he definitely has that artistic focus that will lead to great paintings if it was the thing he wanted to do, you know. But Ben has gone in a direction with his creativity that's made him great and these very helpful skills that I'm benefiting from now. He helps me with all of this media work. Uh, we talk about the similarities all the time, you know, between uh, film, film media, video, photo media, and painting. You know, we always talk about how they're they're very similar and the, the principles of composition are similar. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what it is, is uh, I, it's uh, we're both just storytellers, imaginative storytellers. And, you know, you're composing a world and an image and a story and a thing that's intriguing to look at. And I'm doing just the same. You know, that's I'm using it. a camera, you're using a brush. But, you know, we both definitely uh, view the world in a, a very yeah. similar way. Yeah. Agreed. But that's uh Enough waxing philosophical about how awesome we are. Uh, Grace, Grace Artistry is working on red clothing in their painting and would oh, love nice. to hear your opinion on colors of the shadows okay. and highlights. Okay, we're going to get to that. I'm going to finish this up and then I'm going to go to the computer and take a look at that. So uh, I want to point out here that I have created... That's not a... That's just... Uh, they haven't supplied a photo. That's oh, okay. Just, we're going to do it. Okay, okay. We're going to look at it. So here... I've used only the blue with the intent to create a very translucent look. I want this to look like ice. And let's say I want it to look even more like ice. Let's make it look really icy. I'm not even going to use pure white on the top because that looks like snow. So if I take my blue and even influence the very top, so I'm just going to redo this. Everything is going to have that blue hue to it. Now watch how this immediately looks more transparent. It's not just because it's blue, it's because that blue in comparison to the other colors is somewhat saturated. So we get a look of transparency in that because we really see color and color represents light going through something. Okay, now we can, we can enhance this. If I wanna put a little bit of a reflective look, so let's really put some contrast between the face of this. Let's say this is like a window, this is transparent. I'm going to use uh, a darker saturated blue because we're going to we're going to make this trapping some light. It's it's a little bit darker here. We're seeing more light on the top. OK, I, I made a tiny bit. Let's go a little bit more. OK, we're going to dip in there, put some blue. And then right here at the top, I'm going to put my slightly more purple. So I on the corner of this brush, it's hard to see. But just on the corner is some of that magenta. So I'm going to put that in combination with white. So here where I would expect to see a bit more reflection, just just little touch and see, it's the amount you want, you do the amount you want. So if it's really transparent, if you wanna see a lot of what's, what's behind the eyes, you don't do a lot. Okay, now look at the contrast there. So this immediately takes on the look of surface reflecting, going back, transparent surface, looking right at me here. Okay, so then, Let's put a looks just darker. like a block of ice. Peggy says. All right, good. So, so please then, don't. Uh, Mary, Mary sees uh, Sid the sloth on that block. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Very good. You know, I I should put a yeti in this, but uh, we're I'm not gonna do that in this one because we're short on time. But that's my that's the mascot of my son and daughter's school. Is a is a yeti. So nice. what I'm gonna do here is. Do a combo. So this is facing. I decided my light's going this way. I put my shadows. So here, because I want angles that are going parallel to my vision, it's not like a window. Now we're looking at a more reflective surface. Here is where I'm going to put more of that purple again because I want some reflection. It doesn't have to be light reflection. 
it's that shifting toward the less intense turquoise that causes it to look. So see how that shift of color immediately causes this to look less translucent. It looks less like you're looking into it, more like it's reflecting some colors that are out there. So you can use these. So what I what I really want you to go away with is this pattern and not the step-by-step -step in, in these specific colors are how you paint ice. You could do this in many different color schemes, but look for this pattern of the reflective parts shifting toward the purple and the translucent parts shifting toward the deeper blue. So now, now I want reflection in here. So I'm going to go like this and I'm just going to try to put the kind of mirror image of this thing in here. Let's put so a little while bit of black. doing this, uh, Damien had an interesting question. Uh, okay, do okay, you, what's that? Do you look at photos? Do you, you, uh... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I spend lots of time outside in the natural world looking at the, at the things I want to understand. But this, this era, you know, I, I feel like uh, I was born for this time that we live in because there's so many photos available. It, it makes my studying so, so much faster to look at. I'm thankful for all the great photographers out there because they uh, have supplied so many great things for study. So I can compare what I saw outside. I, I can say, I wonder if this is the pattern. I'll have a theory and I'll, and I'll think uh, maybe this is the pattern that I'm looking at. And so then I'll study photos. And when I find that pattern uh, observable in the photos as well, then I'm very confident. I say, yes, I found it. I got it. I got the pattern. Then I go to a painting and I reproduce it there. And if I can reproduce it in the painting and see it both in the photo and what I saw outside, then that's, you know, it's like uh, triple cross referencing my experiment. It's, it's uh, you know, not too different than your ordinary scientific method. So I'm going to put the reflection of this more purple there. I'm about done with this little ice block, just floating along, put some blue in there. I'm just trying to predict the color of the water mixed half and half, for lack of a better, better description, mixed with the color of the iceberg above. So it's just slightly darker, slightly darker. So we got a lot of latecomers here. Uh, uh, I saw earlier we had people from Australia, Niger. We got people in okay, the United cool. States. Oh, let's, uh, let's hear from you wallflowers out there. All right, nice. Thanks for watching, the chat. Thank Send you. an email to info at muraljoe.com if you'd yeah. like yeah. to have Joe look at anything. Send it there. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do here is here's a little trick. You know, this is this is a little little bit beyond our uh, agenda here, but I'm just going to put a little line because sometimes, you know, I learned this from Bob Ross, by the way. Sometimes the water will ramp up on the edge of something just because of the surface tension, you know, will go, and it's just catching the light. You know, like maybe it's just ramping up, reflecting the the brighter light of the sun or something shining that way. Whatever it is, it's just a good. It's just an easy special effect to put a, a tiny little line, maybe a few dots. It doesn't have to be a perfect line. Just to define yeah. where that surface meets the, the object that's above the water. Okay. We see you guys out there in Texas, Seattle, Liverpool, Whoa, nice. Vegas, right. Washington. Right. Tuning in from all over. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, man. Cool. Um, for so... Uh, Jojo Ona says, Jojo, <laughs> J -O -J -O. have you ever uh, used oil based paints so they would behave more like oil paints than acrylics? I'm going to try and translate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Probably asking, like, have you used like modified water base? Uh, <clears throat> it sounds, it sounds to me like maybe we're talking about modifying water base paint so that it behaves more like oil would that be it have you ever used have you ever used oil-based paints so they would behave more like oil paints than acrylics well jojo you're gonna uh ona you're gonna need to clarify that i think but uh that is a that great that is a great showstopper question that's like Ooh, netherlands new jersey lake tahoe albuquerque new zealand nice yeah. nice new zealand okay so kiwi what? up in here patrick the kiwi 
Nah, cousin. All right, sweet. Okay, so I want you to understand what I'm doing right here to make these icicles. I'm leaving more white on the edges, creating this gradient, and then just kind of making the ridges, you know, just, just whatever texture I can. But that brighter edge, okay, the reason this happens is because the air reflects the light more than the water. Okay, I know that that didn't make a lot of sense. I heard it come out of my mouth, and I'm like, okay, that's not that's not going to be easy for people to know what I'm trying to say. So when I paint waves, I talk a lot about how the curl, and you can look at like amazing underwater footage where you see the curl of the wave, and you see it from underwater. It's this big tube. It's an air bubble. It's an air bubble. It's where you're in the water, and you're seeing where the water meets air. So if you're, you're, you're in a swimming pool, you're looking up and you see where the surface meets the water, it is highly reflective, even more than if you're in the air looking at the water. So on the edges of an icicle, you're looking through the water that makes the icicle, through the ice, and then back to the air again. So it's those edges that where the air is coming through that are very reflective. And what those edges do is they reflect the bright light that is on either side. So we got a world of white snow and bright light out here. And so these edges are reflecting that back at you. But then when you look straight through it, the reflection happens as it becomes more parallel to your vision. It doesn't really happen as much when you're looking straight through at 90 degrees. So I can get this look of icy because this is a very, very kind of cartoony approach, you know, kind of it's not not the most amazing set of icicles i ever painted but but it's fun you know to be able to just quickly render icicles by just leaving the edges light that's all you do you just leave the edges light and you let that gradient and again that gradient has this has this real brilliant blue and i'm going to mute it a little bit with my black a little bit extreme for my liking so i'm putting a bit of black in there so hey, so here's a question for you guys out there. This is a new year, 2022. And one thing that we've realized is it's not easy to ship a painting in the mail. But Joe is painting a lot of things. So uh, these days there are these things called NFTs. And I apologize. Oh, if you Ben's bringing it up. He's bringing much. it up. <laughs> but if there's anybody out there that hears a mural Joe NFT and starts salivating, let us know in the comment section. We'd love to hear about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, it's an unfamiliar concept to me. I, I've been told about it. I was reading up on blockchain technology, but uh, I'm not going to make this show about that. Yeah. Ahead. You know, if you've been to any kind of a conversation between two people under 40 these days, it's <laughs> all you hear about. So I apologize. But if you're out there, let us know. That's a good, that's a good, uh, yeah, this is a good opportunity. I, I, I would have said the same if I thought about it. I would love to hear, uh, the interest level that's out there. That's something that we have talked about, explored a little bit. So yeah, let us know what you think. Okay, this is this is my <laughs> quick demo. Rocket. Rocket says I like physical things. Yeah, and yeah. I could have guessed. Not fake, not fake things. <laughs> Man, I love I I could have guessed uh, that clever. Death Rocket was gonna say that. I could have guessed. It's almost like I know you a little bit. Yeah. Oh, okay. So all right. I'm going to I'm going to get off of the snow and ice subject here and I'm going to go to the computer and look at whatever we've got. Do we got some uh, paintings queued up, Ben? Yeah, we to, got some uh, paintings all queued up okay, here. If we okay. wanna... All right, cool. OK, so final thoughts, final thoughts as I'm putting my last touches on this is uh, that painting ice is very much like painting water. I'm painting reflection, and that's why we see the ice, the snow, we're painting the reflection, just like with anything else. And so I just understood that the light coming through is the blue moved more toward the turquoise to the greener side of the spectrum. The light, the sh light bouncing off, I have more purple colored, uh, whether it's shadow or highlight. Light that bounces off of it moves, moves more toward the the purple light that goes through it moves more toward the turquoise side. So by separating those two things, I, I get this really dynamic looking. I exaggerated it for the for the sake of the illustration, you know, but this is how you can create that effect. So you're just painting the reflection and you can you can make it like glass, super transparent, where you basically paint 
the background behind it. I, I added a lot of the color so we could really see it. So I'll move on. I'll move on. We're going to go up here and, uh, and see if you have anything else. I can do a quick demo if there's anything else. That one, that one took up some time, but I feel glad that we did. So uh, anything else that you want to see a quick demo on an effect, a texture, something that you just want a clear answer to, let me know. Ben's got some cool stuff queued up on the computer here. What are we looking at, Ben? So this one is from uh, Jesse. Okay, thanks, Jesse. For, uh, and so sending your Jesse is, uh, you know, thanks so much for inspiring the world. So there they are. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot, yeah. Well, you know, uh, they've got a lot. They've got a lot to say. So they're struggling to mix colors. Okay. Well, I like they're, the painting. They're I'm looking. They're getting a dull look. They're getting okay, a dull okay. look and a dark look. That's yeah, not, yeah. Well, uh, like. Forgive the background noise. I'm just scooting the micro. Uh, the I almost said microwave. I meant microphone. A little bit closer to me so that you can hear me real well. Uh, yeah, I love your painting. Good job, man. You have really put some good work into this. Your perspective is right on. I feel like I could step right into that scene and walk on those blocks, that cobblestone walkway, very consistent. And I love I love how it, how it gets smaller so fast it causes it to really feel like it goes back on on you know a really horizontal thing uh, uh, surface. And I love I love those. I don't I don't know if they're you know. There's a lot of trees that look like that in tropical places, maybe banana trees, or something, whatever those are. They look, they look super cool along the, the walkway there. Okay, so this is the answer to your question. To get this to look more vibrant, work from a mid-tone. Be brave with your bold colors and rely on the pattern of light and shadow, just like I did with the ice. I just painted ice, which is just white. So you might, you know, there's a lot of potential to do a very bland painting when you're doing a white object that has shadow. It could come out very gray. But because I understand that the, I'm going to move my little arrow off of this screen. That's kind of annoying to look at. <laughs> so I'm going to point at some spots. You know, that makes me think. That makes me think here. I could go to some areas. Okay, bricks, for instance. Work from a mid-tone that is more bold than either of these. So you have an orange brick color that is a little closer to a primary color. So then you can you can put that down and then add your highlight to it. You know what? I'm going to demonstrate this because this is worth doing. Okay, everything in your picture is awesome and it would be improved by following this principle. Work from a mid-tone, add light and shadow. I'm going to do that really quick. We're just going to paint, paint like maybe a block of wood, maybe a brick. Yeah, yeah you know, there. also there's there's some interest in how do you determine uh, shadow and highlight colors. Oh, okay. Very good. That's a great thing to answer. Shadow and highlight colors. It is as simple as adding the color of the light uh, that you are imagining in your picture. So I'm imagining, well, I'm just imagining white light. And to keep it simple... Once, once you know these patterns, then you can experiment with different colors of light sources. But to keep it simple, let's just imagine that in this picture, I'm painting, uh, okay, it's going to be a, a block of wood because I think that'll actually be totally out of place in this picture. Okay, so I'm going to paint just this, this chunk of wood on here. So this color is similar to, to your rocks. But instead of going to the highlight or the shadow first, I'm just putting this really bold mid-tone. The mid-tone doesn't have that doesn't have to be especially bold, but you can be as bold, meaning saturated and colorful. You, you can be as bold as you want to, and the pattern will work. So you can get all that color that you're after. If you want it more muted, you can do what I just now did, add more black to it. So what I'll do is I'll add light to this. Okay. Light's going to come through. The color's going to shift toward the yellow, just like the blue shifted a little green. It went toward the yellow. Light's going to go through wood, shift a little bit toward the yellow, which is going to make this a slightly, it doesn't have to be a lot, just slightly yellower. So we're just considering this to be like white light. Okay, I'm putting a little bit of yellow. Imagine that I just pre-mixed this, though. I added a little bit of yellow and white to my mid-tone. I'm just adding that to my mid-tone. 
So now here is the bright sunny side of my object. Okay, what shape is it? It's gonna be kind of rectangle, I guess, because I'm just gonna make a straight line. So if I just make that, that solid line, I create a hard edge, and then it's more like one of your blocks, you know? So, so this look right here is very good for creating wood, very good for creating rock, very good for creating skin tone. It's good for all those things. Okay, now I'm just, I'm just lightening this to my preference. There's no certain amount of lightness that that needs to be. I'm just putting it, you know, to whatever my preference is for the painting, how bright I want it to be. But notice I still have my mid-tone in here. Okay, so now the next step, I'm going to add shadow to that mid-tone. And unless this is like a razor knife-like sharp corner, I'm going to have a little bit of color still visible in that. So... So why don't I just why don't I just put a little bit of a softer blend? We're gonna see some of that I lost. I lost some of my the paint started drying on me. So we're gonna add a little more. So that was black. This is a red oxide, you know, but whatever color, use any color you want. Okay. Peggy says it already looks like wood. All right, sweet. So I'm just restoring my mid-tone because it started to dry kind of quick on me. Okay, so I'm going like this. Now I'm gonna add a shadow. What color is my shadow will look? I got blue everywhere. I'm going to make the shadow on the blue side. But when I mix blue with anything, it's going to turn greener than I want it to because paint, as opposed to light, turns kind of green when you mix it. So the blue is going to turn greener than I want it to to represent natural light. You can look at a lot of my other videos and, and see that paint mix is different than the light. So to correct that, I'm going to add purple. So now I'm adding this magenta. Okay, we've got magenta, we got blue. So I'm really just adding purple for a shadow because I decided that the shadow should be on the blue side. Okay, now I'm gonna go like this. You gotta make the noises. Okay, okay, now notice the diversity. <laughs> Good job, Ben. That was perfect. I was trying to supplement. Okay, if you're shooting lasers, you need somebody to shoot lasers back. This is it. That's the whole demonstration right there. That's all you need because I've accomplished the three-dimensional look of light and shadow from a mid-tone. That tiny little strip will add so much interesting, vivid color to a painting. And look at the diversity in my shadows. This will happen by accident all over the place. When you're adding your shadow to a mid-tone, little bits of your mid-tone pop out and you know maybe you get the intermixing of it and you, and you just get this diversity if you if you like it you do it you know you can just pre-mix them and, and forget about that too so you have this pattern and having color that color in between the light and the shadow is the effect of that and then the consistency that you get too when when you you know maybe there's like a i just realized this might be fun to turn this into like a shipwreck launch you get consistency between light and shadow. When you work from a mid-tone, they look like they're from the same from the same object, you know. So you got a couple of questions here that are similar okay. in nature. Okay, okay, uh, okay. So well, Death Rocket says, does the ice get harder to paint if your environment has non-blue colors? And then in, I believe, a similar question, Mary C is saying the bricks shadow side in that painting will be reflecting the color of the building, wouldn't it? So these are two instances of the environment determining the object's color. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So you decide, uh, well, you know, well, you, you, yeah. What things should they consider there when they're considering their environment and how right, it's Yeah. Well, them. okay. So, so, you know, if, if, so there's all kinds of things to think about. This is where studying photos is actually a very helpful thing because, you know, uh, a photo, you might see complexities that you that you don't think to imagine. You know, maybe there's just a, a touch of reflection coming off the surface. All I'm doing now is reproducing the colors plus blue and adding purple to make it not turn too green, just like I did up here to make this reflection in the water. Under you know, I want it to look like it's reflecting on this water. It was just kind of a fun effect. So so I put that in there, and uh, maybe it's not spot on with the colors, but you know, it's the it's the idea. So thinking about that pays off. You know, I, my goal here is not to make sure that I consider everything and nail that this is not a keeper painting. It's a demonstration. 
And so I say, uh, put, put your energy into considering that because it can really make spice your painting up quite a bit. If you say, Hey, wouldn't this just like, I forget the name, Ben, but, but who just now said, shouldn't this be reflecting the colors that are behind it? Well, yeah, that would happen if it's wet, which it probably would be if it's in this water. So, Hey, let's put some white on it. Let's put some of that light blue, blue and white mix. And let's just add as much purple as we need to keep it from turning green. Look, now it's reflecting the stuff that's behind it. It looks more wet. Go ahead, Ben. Sorry, I was in. So uh, we got a special request here from Ted. It says, Let me see how you dip your brush, dude. Oh, yeah. Okay, Brian, here. Put it on the materials. Let's, let's go let's to that a little brush dip. Yeah, this yeah. This is okay. what happens, Ted. Right. The brush. <laughs> and this is on many videos. So Here it <laughs> is. Know. Here's the dip. Everybody. Okay. Now, wait, I just wait, barely wait, touch it. I just ba okay, we're going to go like that. I just touch it Choop, like that. You know, I don't like to get a lot on my brush, and then I don't have to wipe it on the edge of the can. If I get too much, you can see that I definitely do wipe it on the can, but it's better It's better if I don't. It's better if I go up here and wipe it on some so I can preserve my can. So I'm always trying to have a very accurate depth according to how much uh, paint I want to put on that surface. So, so then we got one from bit. June here, too. She's got uh, this idea. She's trying to freeze a frame of her son skateboarding. Hey, another son skateboarder out there. Uh, so uh, trying to paint an action scene. He wants it to look like action, you know, like got a skateboarder in the air. Okay, Any okay, tricks cool. to make stuff look like it's moving or exciting. You got any, yeah, okay. any tips for June? All right, all right. Um, I'm not going to give you an easy answer. It's definitely a possible answer, and you can do it. But that you're asking about... You're asking about something that is a very top-notch skill. If you, you yeah, can accomplish yeah, I, was, that. I had my own thoughts there for yeah for June as well. Yeah, and so don't take this as don't take this as discouragement that it can be done, but it takes a lot of homework. It takes time put into understanding the anatomy and what positions the parts go to when they move. And there's no shortcut except copying a photo. There is no shame in copying a photo because you might remember that pose and it might help you along your way. So. When it comes to that, don't be ashamed to just pull out a photo and understand the position of the objects you're trying to put in place. But a thorough three-dimensional understanding of anatomy is how I do it, and I would be misleading you to tell you otherwise. Okay. Yeah, you know, I was I was going to say, you know, use a, a emphasized perspective. And, uh, you know, like if you're filming a skateboard video, you always see them with a fisheye lens or like a real wide angle. That's oh, because yeah, it makes okay. skateboarding look more dynamic, the movements away oh, from the camera, toward answer, the camera. Yeah. They're more uh, dramatic. So no, that's coming know. from a good angle. But that's you got good... to understand anatomy, you know, how to make how to make a human body appear as though it's being filmed from a wide angle lens. So Joe is exactly right. It's it's complicated, you know, so. Yeah. Well, research, you, bring research. Up a, uh, you bring up a good point, Ben that on above and beyond putting the anatomy in believable positioning well there is a composition issue like what how blown out is the perspective how small is your background how huge is your foreground you can vary those things a lot for the feeling of a picture yeah i go to great lengths to try and create exciting looking images you know in my work and so i i specifically tap into that you know wide angles and uh, dramatic lighting. Yeah. Hard shadows, hard highlights. That's all. That's that it. Makes yeah. It yeah. So my point in painting that little log in the in the water, I, I put that reflection, I put that blue shadow on it to show the difference that those colors makes. You know, it really pays off uh, to consider the light source, what's shining on it, working from that midtone. So this this painting right here. This could uh, benefit so much using that technique, using that mid-tone. You've already done it a lot on these leaves. I love these leaves. You've got the effect right there. See how that green is much bolder than this? Okay, so use a bold green in the grass and then dab it like crazy to get all of the brighter highlights. And then you'll have this translucent, bold looking green. Use something a little more colorful on these rocks and then turn it gray by adding the highlights, but you'll still have little dabs of the color. So you're just missing color in your shadows. Color in your shadows is all that stands between you and a vibrant, exciting painting. So, whoop, wrong one. But that log looks pretty cool, right? I mean, isn't that pretty? I accidentally switched to that, but I'm going to admire my own work from it. You know, it's the blue I put under there. How about that? It's just a pattern. See, that's that's <laughs> awesome. Hey, hey, uh, so Jacob, uh, Jacob has a question doing? here. 
Jacob has a question here that has a pretty complex answer too, but what's the difference in color? I'm, I'm going to steer you to Joe's water videos. Uh, you know, he talks at length um, in great deal of detail about oh, this, yeah. but he wants yeah, to know what's sure. the difference yeah, yeah. in color with reflected light on top of the water or ice as opposed to an object being seen underneath and through. Oh, yeah. So like, if, like if you're yeah. looking at a fish under the water, like what's the difference in the color? Like it's... Yeah. Right. Same. Okay. Same thing. Same thing. This is only going to take seconds. Seconds yeah. here. Okay. So what we're going to do is paint the rest of this log well, visible. Let's that camera too. Visible under the water. Okay. So the difference between this above the water, it's exactly what you said. It's exactly what we've been doing. The image is going to have the blue of the water mixed. I'm going to tell you before I do it so that you know what I'm doing and you're going to see it work. The blue is going to be mixed with this, and I'm not going to adjust it with the purple. And that's going to allow it to be more shifted toward the green, because that's what blue paint does when you mix it with some. It turns kind of green. And that pattern is what we want to see. It's the direction that it shifts on the spectrum. That's the short answer to your question. Which direction the color shifts on the spectrum is what tells you whether the light's bouncing off of it and, uh, or whether it's submersed in or you're looking through water at, uh, what's the right way to say it? If water is in between me and this log. Okay, I'm gonna reproduce my colors. Mid-tone, right? We've got mid-tone here. This is gonna go into the water. And we'll add a little bit of that distortion effect. You know, it uh, changes the angle on this when, when it goes under the water. So we'll go this direction, watch. We'll go like that. See, that'll be a nice effect for this. Kind of flattens it out, goes a different different way when it's under the water. Okay, we're gonna go like this. Now we're gonna add the highlights. Okay, we need lots of blue in here. Lots of blue, because this is underwater. And because I'm not bending this blue toward the purple like I did here where it's reflective and out of the water. So it has the look of being subsur subsurface, right? Just like this. It looks like you're looking into the surface where I have the bluer, more turquoise color. Okay, I'm gonna add white to get it to the same darkness as the rest of the water we're just going to kind of do a, a very rough job here you know i'm going to try to just smear that in here i'll just grab some water like this and just do this so it looks like it's shortcut to blending just smear it off like that okay now i've got the blue mixed with this log i'm going to bring that color right up here it's going to be less and less mixed as it comes up it's going to go right through, right through here, right to that, because this is just reflection. So I'm going to interrupt that reflection right there. Go right there. I'm going to put a little bit of, of um, I'm thinking that the reflection might, I don't know if it's lighter or darker, to be honest. That one's got me. But this little triangle where it's going to go, that's where the log is coming through, the reflection right there. Okay. And then we're going to go. By here and add the bright highlight side of it so we've got blue mixed with it we did yellow i'm going to use all the same colors yellow yellow red orange blue mix them together now that greenish color is exactly what causes this to look like it's under the water because in comparison it's the context it's the comparison in comparison to what it's surrounded by that is much greener uh, than the other and the other colors. So this immediately looks like it is the orange color of that log combined with the blue color of the water. And then uh, just by keeping it on that, that turquoise side, it looks subsurface. If I were to add that purple to it, like here, it destroys everything, messes it all up. It won't work anymore. It has to have that pattern. I'm going to even add a little bit more. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to add just a touch more of the blue because I like that effect so much. So we'll put more and really make this look like it's under the water. Here's more of the blue. Grabbing a little bit more. So I got another painting here for you when you're ready. Oh, yeah. We need to do that. We need to move on to other paintings. I'm getting all caught up in this one. Okay. That is exactly how you put something under the water. So halfway in the water, halfway out. I just added the color of the water to it. And when it's blue, it's simple. But just remember 
when something's out of the water, you don't, then the reflection shifts toward that purple versus when you want water, when you're looking through an amount of water. Okay, I've said enough times, let's go. <laughs> you can tell I love explaining, man. It's a bit redundant. All right, what else we got here? Yeah, oh, this cool, man. Mary. Love the colors. Look at that. That yeah, has got some detail uh, in it, too. Yeah, this is this is Mary Sue. She says a whimsical <clears throat> painting I'm working on. I think I need some type of gradient in okay. the background, perhaps. Okay, okay, okay. Gradient. All right, all right. Dots, maybe. And is there any goal? You know, is there any uh, any any goal in mind that we're talking about in that? Because I uh, uh, don't want to, I don't want to steer this painting in my direction. I want it to be Mary's direction. You know, I think Mary, uh, you know, she just said uh, this is a whimsical painting. Yeah. She's working. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, so she's, I guess maybe, do you, do you feel that it needs a gradient in the background? Well, I'm just going to tell you what a gradient would accomplish. Okay. Depth. I'm just going to say, if you put a gradient in the background, you're going to have depth in your picture. Whether or not that's what you're trying to do, I love what you've done. It's fun. It's cool. Yeah. You know, like a, like a you gradient know. of dots, like on a, like a newspaper, you know, that, Kind of dot 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 dot. Yeah, know. yeah. Gradients. That's that's what she's specifically asking. Yeah. Okay. I I you got a million different options for textures you could do, but one thing I can tell you certainly is that gradients that don't have sharp edges, like your many many beautiful sharp outlined edges here. There's all kinds of cool flowing shapes in your picture. These come forward, especially especially on top of a gradient. So, you know, this is a trick I use when I'm doing a lot of things of similar color. If I want leaves in front of leaves in front of leaves, I'll really blend out the background. Then I'll use sharp edges in the front to do this. So if you put a gradient behind this, then you're going to get depth. That background will go further away and your foreground will jump, jump toward you, just like a camera that is focused on the foreground and the background kind of blurs out with shallow depth of field. If I've got my terminology right there, Ben, that's it. Yeah, that sounded so, good to me. So go for it. Do a gradient. You know, a gradient looks like atmosphere. It looks deep. It looks like there's light coming through a substance and you don't have an edge where it stops. So it just keeps going. Gradients are amazing. You know, they're awesome effects. I put them in every painting. So I say squeeze in gradients wherever you can because they look awesome. But I don't want to steer your painting uh, where where you want to where you want to take it. I love these <laughs> fun geometric shapes you made. Whims whimsical, whimsical uh, might be the word you're using, but but this this is really really fun and interesting to me. It almost it almost has a native these kind of triangle eyes almost have like a Native American art look to them. I really like the geometric lines in the eyes of that cat. All Super right, so cool. Thanks one, for sharing uh, it. Here's one we got coming up from um, Hillary. Oh, and right. Hillary Sweet. is wondering, how can I get the water to look like it's behind the rocks on the right bottom part? Okay, okay. Uh, right bottom part. Right bottom part. Let's go over here and look. Wait, how do I move this? Oh, there we go. I'm dragging it. Okay. Okay. Dragging it. Dragging right, it. Uh, right here? Right here? Yeah, this so this like, part? And, yeah, yeah. and or are we talking this part? It looks like it's behind the rocks. Behind the right oh, rocks. I know exactly what you're saying. Okay. So you're saying right now your picture, it doesn't have yeah, that like look of these rocks that, being out yeah. in front of that yeah. water. Yeah. Okay. Let me take let me take five seconds to think about this because I hate giving wrong answers. I would just I know that, you, you know, I would just intuitively put them together layer by layer and I would just think about all the steps involved, but there's got to be some key reason right here why this is happening. Okay, I got it. Look, it's not your water. Your water's fantastic. It's the rocks. Your rocks have this light scheme that that is not telling the same story as your water. So you have light, according to this, what I'm seeing, you have light coming straight from the viewer's perspective, hitting head on. The reason I'm saying that, like this light looks like it's on the left sides of some ridges. 
fantastic. That looks beautiful. And I love your colors. And I even see you've got some beautiful mid-tone color in there, just like I was talking about. But on the edges, you've got dark on the right. You've got dark on the left. You got dark on the right. You got dark on the left, dark on the right. You got dark on the left. And so that has taken away from the three-dimensional look of your rocks. They need to pop forward. That's what needs to happen. So don't do anything to your water. Make your rocks have lighting that says they are in that environment and they will pop forward. So choose one side. Well, you can you can keep them the way they are. I'm going to zoom out, see if I can see where your intended light source. Okay, in your clouds, your light's coming from the left. In your rocks, the light's coming from the left. Very good. Put some light on the very edges, right? Do you see where my, do you see where the little handy hand is? Right here. Yep, you, you see, see the handy hand. Okay. Right there, make it light. Right here, make it light. And this is good. This is good. That's just a crevice, you know. And uh, these dark shadows, if you make those a little bit bluer, just a little bluer, make them visibly blue, it'll look like they are, they are in this environment reflecting some blue colored light from all of this water that's on the other side of them. And that'll put them in that environment. You'll have the bright highlight on the left. You'll have the blue reflection on the right. They'll pop forward like magic. It'll just come right out right. at you. Hillary's saying, yes, yes, two exclamation points. Okay, that's it. You got it. Keep going. The painting looks amazing. Keep going with it. It's awesome. All right, cool. So we got one here on some red clothing, All right? So... We are going to switch on over to this on, one, which on. has the red He's on clothing. He's working on, He's working on the switch. Right We're just here. looking at my experience. The old switch crew. <laughs> oh, cool. I like that. I like the blurry look of it. That's cool. Dreamy. Yeah. Yeah. So we're... we're uh, Okay. Okay, uh, okay. I believe this is like, yeah, highlight and shadows, you know, getting the right highlight. And yeah. Shadow. Yeah. Okay. Now you okay. said this at the beginning of the stream, you said yeah. we, we want to, how do we get lifelike colors on this red clothing? Yeah. Is that yeah, it? I believe yeah, yeah. that was the, a well, while ago. Yeah. Midtones are the theme. Midtones are the theme here. You can uh, do the same thing. Okay. I'm just going to point specifically at some areas and These... just, just for a, a quick little reference here, here's what they, uh, <clears throat> here's where it started. They've got a couple of uh, things here to show you. Oh, nice. I love that. That's a good drawing. I like, that's yeah, a good so study that's... of the values first. That's yeah, cool. that's how it started. And then here okay. we are uh, getting our, getting our red highlights and shadows in. Okay. So... Okay. So color in those transitions between light and shadow, get the color that you want of your fabric to really get this to look like clothing clothing has a, has a very translucent quality it lets a lot of light through you know if you ever made a, a little blanket for it then you know that it's not pitch black inside the light shines through it and you, you know like you put your red blanket over over some chairs in the house and then the light shines on it's this real vibrant red color it's even more vibrant than when you stand outside and look so clothing has the same kind of translucency that the ice has that I've been painting. And so by getting a bit more color, not everywhere, but in between your highlights and your shadows. So you decide where the highlights and shadows are. But for example, this is dark. This is light. There's no color in between. And that is interfering with what would be the look of fabric, specifically the texture fabric lets a lot of light in and does a lot of coloration to it. Same thing down here. You're on the right track. I see color in between the light and shadow. You could just get a touch more. Based on how much color I see on this highlight, uh, I think that you could just, just get a touch more color in between your light and shadow. That is, a, that is a real signature, unique quality to clothing. Color between the light and shadow. You can, uh, you can check out photos. We said, you know, just like that previous question, look at many photos of fabric and look for that pattern. Look at how much vibrant color is just touching the brightest highlights. And then how that, how that vibrant color is diminished when it goes into a shadow. Perhaps sometimes it's colorful all the way into the shadow and you'll get a much more, much more fabric-y looking texture for the clothing. You can make it any color you want that way. 
Yeah, Anna is uh, our artist here. She remembers seeing a video where you were talking about that previously. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. Great question, Anna. Thank you for showing your work. I really like it. So we got uh, expression in this. Yeah, yeah, we got uh, a couple more coming in here. Late okay. Comers. Last okay. call, everybody. Last All right, call. cool. Okay, so while that's thing? coming in, we're going to go like this. I'm going to go over here. The paint has dried. And so this is something that we often battle with water-based paint is that it, it dries and sometimes ends up not being the color that you felt like you were putting on. So it gets a little bit darker. So look, I just want to, I just want to demonstrate real quick that if I, if I really add the blue to this, we're going to get that underwater look with a real fun little shortcut, just blue and white, not just, just a little bit of blue and white. This is just while we're waiting. Not, nothing super important. I mean, we're right. We're, we're, you can hustle on back here whenever you're done. With okay. This. You got some stuff. Okay. Look, I'm just taking some of this blue and white mix and I'm going to add water. A trick you can do to slightly alter colors in your painting is just glaze over it, you know, just, just a light layer. And underwater is actually easier than above water because there's no alterations that need made. You just put the color over it. And for the same reason it looks like it's underwater, you know, it's, it's under the paint. The paint has the same effect. So I can make that look like it's more submerged in that water. Here, look, let's stamp it off. Stamping is a technique I use a lot too. All right, come on, let's move back over to the paintings. All right. So what you got? Here Whoa, that is super work. cool. Look at that. Nice. Daniel. I got to zoom in Daniel. on this thing. Oh man, that is awesome. Thanks for sharing this. Thanks for sharing. Daniel, AKA Death Rocket Daniel. Really, really. I don't think I have ever done a drawing that cool. That is super cool. Good job for a story that Daniel is writing. Okay, uh, okay. Oh, he's I like looking, this little elfy looking character looking over here. That's really cool. Yeah, nice. he's looking for your comments on the perspective. Um, is it supposed <clears throat> to be rather fish eye-ish? Okay, okay, yeah. Very good question. Okay, I'm going to analyze it. Uh, first, I want to say what I love about it because uh, yeah. we were just talking about fabric and look at the mid-tone in this fabric. Look at that. In between light and shadow, look at the vibrant color. So even if you're not going for this exact look, I mean, this is highly stylized, right? But let's just look at the pattern. This is worth looking at. Daniel's picture is an awesome example of how you can get the over lots and lots of details. And here we've got the less colorful highlights. It is in between the light and shadow where he's got this real kind of, what is that, like a salmon, salmon color? And then, uh, and then the shadows are, are maybe less colorful because they're dark. So we got all that color over here on the green. We got lots of color. And then the highlights have all the white added. So they're maybe not quite as colorful. And it looks like a good illustration of fabric floating around, wrinkling. Even on the white, look, this color is browner. That gray, it's not gray. It's a shade of brown that's in between the white and this right here, this more bluish gray. I'd say that's closer to what I would call a true gray. A matter of opinion, of course. But look at this has the most color. Those tones in between light and shadow have the most color. Good job, Daniel. I love it. Thanks for the, the great example of the, using the mid-tone. You are on the right track, my friend. That, that perspective is dialed in. You just, I know what's going on here. You sent this in just because you want to hear me say that you nailed it. That's exactly what's happening right here. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm looking at. I would do it too. But look, I want to talk about why this is so great. This is what all perspective does. It always does this, no matter whether you're looking through a camera, through your eyes. It's The question is how extremely is it doing it? You know, maybe your mind auto corrects it. Uh, maybe cameras don't do it very extremely. But if you stand in a room, you're going to see when you look down one side of the wall, you're going to see it going down to a vanishing point. And then when you look at the other side of the wall, you're going to see it going the other direction, bending down to the other vanishing point. It bends. And so when you squish it down into a tiny picture like this one, you see both vanishing points. It's a matter of the number of vanishing points that you see. So the vanishing points, there is two vanishing points for every one line. Look, this is one line. Can everybody see my little triangle mouse? 
Now I'll see oh, you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it. one line. Look, I'm going to follow it. Vanishing point on this bottom end of it. Another vanishing point on the top. It's going to go up here. Okay. We're going up, 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 up. We're, if we continued, we would start bending into the middle again to the other vanishing point of that line. That's why this perspective is so awesome because it's showing both vanishing points at both ends. It's considering the vanishing points at both ends. That effect is definitely not going to be seen right here in the middle. It's not going to be bowed because there's not enough distance to have that change of angle, you know, and right across the middle is where your straight lines will be because they're already on the vanishing point the whole time. They're just going straight away from you. So they don't bend to the middle, they're already in the middle. So the street across the middle is perfectly straight. Look at that laser straight, boom. Straight across the middle, straight, right there. That's ruler straight. Yeah, man, it's cool. So Death rock, it's got its ruler out, man. You know, let me right. suggest that since this one is so straight, let me just nitpick a teensy, teensy, tiny bit and say, add a tiny bit of an arc on your horizon here, and it will be in such good harmony with the uh, rest of your bowed lines representing the two vanishing points per line instead of just one complex perspective. You know, that is unless you really just want the edge buildings to look like they're taller than the middle buildings. Okay, that, that would have the opposite effect, and then your line, your horizon, would not bow upward. But if these are relatively relatively similar in height, and it's like off the edge of the world look, you know, then, whoa, I got two, two mousies going on this. You doing that, Ben? Okay, anyway. <laughs> Dude, you got two mousies going, man. You got yeah. a mousy part. Yeah, beats me. Okay. <laughs> so... So anyway, I think someone. I think you're witnessing uh, someone hacking into Joe's computer. Right yeah. Now. Oh no. Oh, what are you pointing at? They're pointing at the. They're pointing at the. What? They're going down the street. <laughs> okay. Let's not get distracted. We want the arch. Slight arch. That's the only thing, Daniel. This is awesome, man. You really Which nailed that. Which one is that. yours, Joe? Are you it's the hand. The yeah, hand, it's the though. hand. It's the hand. It must just be. Uh, I don't know what it is. So the arrow has a mind of its own. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. Somebody's doing it. Somebody, it must be your computer. I think you're doing it. I think you're messing with me. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Random things happen. All right. <laughs> hey, we got another one. Here. Last minute okay. submission uh, here from Teresa we're going to look at. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's do one more. This is cool. Hey, I want to thank you all for uh, being such good participators, showing your work. Daniel, that work was awesome, man. I'm going to remember that one. It's really good. Good on the details, too. You got some patience, my friend. Yeah, okay. So we got something else ready? We're, yeah, uh, yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take you back to Florida. Florida. And, uh, oh, I love Florida. Sorry, I'm uh, yelling in the microphone there. Oh, man, I want to go back. That visit was so sweet. I loved Florida. I loved it. All right. We got a gator. Or is so, it a crocodile? Uh, let's let let me switch up our camera here. Yeah. That looks and more crocodile from here. Teresa. Teresa is not happy how the body joins with the water. Okay, uh, okay. It looks too flat to her. And uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You just need you know, I love how powerful good answers are because I can see that you have got plenty of skills. You you have got talent. This this um I'm I'm gonna say there's a crocodile. I feel like it's a crocodile, looks like one. Might be wrong. But uh, I, I really like the details. You've got three-dimensional texture on the skin, and you've got this little bit of shadow on the top. Yeah, looks... so before you tell Teresa about what a great painting she did here, I'm going to go ahead and get my foot back out of my mouth and tell you this is Tiago's painting. Ter oh, you said Teresa. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that's great. <laughs> Sorry, Tiago. Sorry. It's Tiago. Right, Tiago, nice work. Nice work, Tiago. Uh, hey, okay. Tiago, Teresa. Yeah. Tiago, Tiago, you know. <laughs> okay, look, to get this more 3D, you need reflection. That's it. You need shadow. That is a reflective color on the neck of this beast right here. So uh, just, just get some shadow right here. These right here, make those a darker color than this right here. Look, you've got a darker color right along the back, and that looks like it's water reflecting this dark background. Perfect. It's fantastic. So... 
get darker color all the way around this bad boy. You know, you get dark color around this nose, darker white, which is a gray, just like you got on the jaw. See this jaw? Great job. That jaw looks three-dimensional. Get that shadow down here on the bottom of the neck, just the same. I know that the, the underside of a big old crocodile like that is white, but white in a shadow is gray. So don't be afraid to add that gray to get your three-dimensional look. And then the other thing here is a little bit of reflection goes a long way. You saw on my painting, you saw on my painting, oh, wrong camera. That's the right camera. These, these looked, on, this is just for a second. These looked a bit on the flat side uh, before I added the reflection showing that it's hitting that horizontal surface and, and showing its relationship. And so uh, once you get that on, on your, you know, it's, it's just a little bit incomplete. You need some of that reflection showing. Oh, thanks a lot, Brian. Uh, get some of that reflection showing down here because now it looks a little bit superimposed. We've got this bright color completely unrelated to this real dark color. I'll just add some shadow here, add a little bit of the reflection or make it greener and you'll have the gator's body underwater. You could continue the gator's body underwater by taking this white, mixing it, just literally mixing it with this watercolor. Whatever color you used for that dark water, mix that with this white makes it more and more, less and less of the white as you go down. And then you'll have this like cool translucent look where the where its body's going into the water. Then on top of that, you can put a little bit of the white reflection. A little bit goes a long way. You don't need a lot. That's all it needs. You are, you are well on your way to a very three-dimensional, very vicious. Man, those things are scary to look at. Scary. That's yeah. my only hesitation with moving to Florida, really. This is gators, <laughs> man. You don't want to mess <laughs> Those gators don't yeah. mess around. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. You didn't know you wanted two legs. Yeah. The gator gets one of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we have precautions just in case you lose an arm. Just in case you hey, lose. Hey, check this. Check this Whoa, one out. Whoa, what is that? Check this one out. Whoa. Wolf pack. Man, look at that. That yeah, is take amazing. Take us to the other camera so we can see. All that. right. I'm not going to criticize this because it's amazing. It reminds me of there's a cover, a group I really like. A group that I really like uh, called High as a Kite, like a Nor Norwegian group. Huh? Yeah, they got they got an album cover that's like a heart, a heart like this. From, this one's from Eric the Wolf. Oh Pack. man, that looks so cool! Look at that. Okay, I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna talk about what what is making this look so wet and gross. The reason this looks so slimy and slick. Awesome effect, by the way. Nice job is because it has sharp edges, not soft gradients. So wherever you have soft, yeah, Ben, that's totally your mouse. That's totally your computer doing that. Okay, the hand is mine. The white one in the middle is mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I don't understand it. I'm just gonna go with it. Yeah, okay. All right, so the sharp, the sharp sudden change is how you get a mirror glassy reflection, soft gradient changes. Okay, like here we have a soft gradient change. See that area does not look as slick and like it's clear coated or something, you know? Okay, same thing on, on this like thorny crown looking art. That's wild. That's awesome looking. Okay, the gradients are gradual, no sudden changes. So that doesn't look wet and slimy and reflective because you have highlight and shadow, but they're soft changes, gradual changes. So it's not the mirror-like edges. You know why these edges? Do you know why on a real watery, wet surface, the edges are sharp like that? It's because it is literally a reflection. It's literally a reflection of the environment. It might be a mountain range and a horizon. It might be a person next to a white wall, but it is the reflection like a mirror. So that's why you get those sharp edges that you see in there. So you've got, you've got the uh, bright white, you've got this sudden change, and you don't need to think about the environment to get a good effect. Just know that you get those sharp edges. That pattern works every time. Notice this down here, again, does not look as watery. It doesn't look as much like the wet look down here because you don't see those very sudden changes between the white so man, fantastic manipulation of the textures on this. Love it. Super cool. I Eric can't even... the Wolf Pack 
painting hearts. Can't even criticize hearts hearts with anything his about heart it. painting skills. Yeah, All nice right, job. If you ever have a here. question, send it my way. But uh, that's an amazing piece of art right there. So okay. we got one here. Uh, this one is from Sharon. Sharon. Oh, wow, it's cool. I love horses. Man, horses. Yeah, so Sharon is just trying to figure out how to give this horse more life. Okay. So, okay, more life. That is very subjective. But I think I feel what you're saying. Uh, you know, you let's let's just say it's more life. Like you want the look of glossy eyes. You want to see a little bit more three dimensional look, like it's in that environment. All right. So you've got blue all around this. You got this big blue background, and so take some of that blue, just a tiny bit, not a lot, and mix it with some of this shadow. Mix it with with well whatever colors are on your edges. Mix it with some of these and then just do a little touch of it. You don't need a lot. You could overdo it, you know, and then you'll look like you have a wet horse. But if you just do a tiny bit, it can add that look of it being in that blue environment. So maybe in a photograph, you don't see that as much because maybe in the photo, there's more context to the picture. Maybe it's backlit and there's a bright, there's a bright edge on it, whatever. I don't care about that. You can, you can make this sink right into that environment. It's a, it's a tool at your disposal by putting a blue kind of violet. Cause remember when blue bounces off of something, it turns more purple. So if you add blue, add a little bit of purple too around these edges and that'll put it in that environment. Use sharp edges on the, the uh, reflection on the eye just like that previous picture of that heart, you know, remember that eye is reflecting the entire environment. It's glossy and wet and you'll get a more lifelike eye. If you have some kind of a little white shape with sharp edges, no blending, no blending at all. The blending is good. It's cool. Have blending because the environment has blending, but include something that has sharp edges. And then that reflection will just come right to life and then be brave. Put a little bit of color in the reflection. Maybe it's reflecting some of the blue sky. Maybe it's reflecting some orange thing. Who cares? Just put some color. And then even on the bottom of the eye, typically the lower part of the iris has more color just because of the angle and the way the light comes through the retina there. You know, you put a little bit of color right here at the base of the iris. Bring that eye right to life. And all these things are little bits, little things that you can do. Great job with your this looks like fur because you have the translucent effect. Just like I talked about with the wood, with the rocks, light goes into hair, it shines out the other side. You get lots of color between light and shadow. You really nailed that. So give yourself a pat on the back for getting a good translucent life, like look on the fur texture. So, you know, it's not the details. It's not the details that are going to get the effect that you're after on this. It's, uh, it's uh, having that. That's sharp, reading. yeah. Okay, the things I said, I'm being redone, and I'm laughing at that dumb arrow that's floating across. The side. I'm sorry, I have no idea why it's doing that. Everybody, I apologize. I'm just prepping the next yeah. photo here for minimum yeah. lag time. I know we've been on here for uh, a long time. Yeah, yeah. It'd be cool and to see a sunset. It'd be cool to see sunset light. Hey, that's very moody. You know, you put a sunset color, right? You know, sunset colors in the top half of the eye. You know, just an idea. Don't do it just because I said, you know, it's just an idea. I just think it could be cool. Hey, here's one from uh, Damien real quick. Okay, okay. Uh, Let's doing a out, red man. truck. Whoa, no way. That's a painting? Wow. Hey, man, Damien cranking out the red truck Yikes. paintings. That thing is amazing. Let's zoom in on this. Great example of what I just talked about with the eyeball, with that heart. This is, you, you know what? I need to stop painting and just use your work everyone else work. The work you guys are sending in is answering each other's questions. So look, yeah. this sharp line, that's what is on an eyeball too. An eyeball is the small version, except maybe it's just a little dot because it's in the middle of a circle. So, you know, like a good example of that is maybe on some of these rounds, he's just got the bright spot in this tiny little area here. And then that little bit of blurry fog, well, that creates a special effect like lens flare. You know, it's like just all the excess light just bouncing off everything. You get that nice flare. It's an artistic or just a nice vibe. Makes It's at your discretion. You know, you do what you feel. But but understanding what light does, you get these sharp reflections on a high gloss 
smooth, glassy finish. Okay. So Ben, were there hey, any were there any questions? We got on one that? more. Uh, so uh, do you know what Gooch is? G O U C H E. Gooch is that like a medium or something? Because Damien says it was done in Gooch. Well, I, yeah, you, it sounds like you're trying to say Gucci, but you don't know how. Yeah. What's it? <laughs> Except watch, that's not pink. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I don't watch know what it. that is. <laughs> hey, Death Rock knows what it is. Maybe you guys should just talk to each other. Yeah. Oh, I, don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but I just want to say the chrome on this. When you're doing metal, everybody, when you're doing metal, painting a blue color on the top half really pays off. It looks like sky, and it really gives that chrome look. So look, you can see the reflection of the environment in this chrome. I love that. You can see the environment. And that is exactly what makes this look like chrome is that you have an actual environment painted within the chrome. Okay, we can skip. We can skip. Hey, on we learn something day. every day, Joe. So it's yeah, called yeah. gouache. Gouache. Okay, which, gouache. Okay. Which is a hybrid yeah, all right. of uh, watercolor and acrylics. So there you go. That's what that is. Thanks, Damien, for sharing that. Okay, thank um, you. Thank you. So, yeah, you know, we, we got knows. a couple. Got a couple more here, you know. We just all right, all right. Are, what's what's the awesome time? How are we doing on time? How are we doing on time? You know? I do I do have to make it home for dinner. I really yeah, we're gonna get out of here. We yeah, got two more. Real quick. Right. Two I said more. one so hour, we're going on two hours. <laughs> this is J Dub. Oh J -Dub. nice. That is a good picture. Look at that. The skin tone, another fantastic example of the power of a good mid-tone. I'm gonna go right to it and point to it because we've been talking about it. It's a good theme for this show. I think I'm gonna uh Name this video, The Power of Midtones. Okay. We have the light, which looks very reflective because it's colorless. That looks very reflective. It has less color. And then we have the color in between the light and the shadow. Is That's where the most color. Look under the eye. Beautiful. We have that under eye area that has the most orange color added to that brown, tan, whatever you want to call that, that, uh, color the the saturation of that color is what makes this look like skin that has light not only bouncing off of it but illuminating it from within you need that on skin skin looks very zombie like and dead if you don't get that effect and so uh you can see so a good example lips tend to be much less translucent well especially especially on a dark skin especially, especially getting, getting tired brother <laughs> so hey man we just especially we a on more. a uh, dark skinned person lips have a lot more pigment and they're less translucent so you can see less color in between light and shadow so fantastic look at this look how between the uh light and the shadow you don't you don't see there actually is a lot of color in there, but but it, I would judge that it has less, less of the difference. See this more glossy look, and this looks like a darker pigmented lip. Beautifully done. Uh, you don't see so much color between that reflective highlight and the shadow, and that makes it look less translucent, which is a very lifelike look for those dark skinned lips. Beautiful. And so great job. Doing people is hard, so... Uh, uh, nice work on this person. Doing Speaking that. of doing I love people, it. here's one in uh, some pencil, I believe. This one's from... Uh, Whoa, cool. Nice work. We didn't miss an important question on that last one, did we, Ben? We didn't miss a question. No, that was okay. Just, okay, okay. No, Thank you for showing up. that beautiful picture. Thank Thanks for up. showing. Okay. Nice job. Nice we job. Look at that. Pencil on black art paper by uh, Art by Nevin. Really, really. So you just worked with the highlight. It's just the highlight on top yes. uh -huh. yeah. of the rest. Nice work. That's hard to do, man. Anatomy is no joke. A lot of different. Nevingraphics.com, yeah, everybody. I, I, love, I love the wrinkles that you see creating all that expression in the face. Nice work. Nice work. So, so uh, you know, even, even with just doing two-tone stuff. I'll just give you one little tip. Take it or leave it. You don't have to. I'm not always right about everything, but a trick I like to do on drawings is add a tiny little difference of color on the very edge just to make it look more three-dimensional. It's not because it was in the photo. It's not because it always happens. It's because the effect is cool and I like it. So I'll take just, just off the edge. I'll leave the edge bright and I'll put the tiniest shadow just inward from the edge right along here. Slight shadow. I'll do that. And, you know, the sharper the curve, the skinnier the shadow. Something you can do, something to consider. 
but don't let me stand in the way of your beautiful drawing. I love it. All right. And to take it home, Nate here, he says, you ask for a sunset, you get yourself a sunset, by golly. Whoa, nice. That is sweet. Look at that. Oh, man, my eye just my eye just is glued to these two spots instantly. Boom, right there. Man, I love that. I got to zoom in on this sucker. Look at those colors. That is fantastic. Very nice work. So a very difficult thing in clouds. This is hard to do. So I'm going to pick at this little because it's so amazing. Every amazing painting needs some guy to pick at a little bit. You know, if you use just a tiny touch, okay, you did it super well down here. So I can't really criticize you because you understand and have done this well. This little bit of purple is awesome for blending white clouds into a blue sky. Uh, an experienced artist can tell you how annoying it is to get an overly turquoise color when you're trying to blend the white clouds into the blue sky and you get this very turquoise outline on everything. It's very hard not to get that. So the solution, if you're working wet on wet, which this looks beautifully done, you know, it almost looks digital. Is this digital? This looks like digital art. So sometimes, uh, so if you're going digital, you, you don't run into that problem as much because that doesn't create that green look. But you saw how my blue went very turquoise when I mixed it. And so a tiny bit of purple in there can help those clouds blend right into that blue sky and look even better than they already are. They're so awesome. Man. Yeah, so here's another one. These shadows me. on top of that glow. Man, here's here's one fantastic. for me too. Just real quickly, he sent these over as Beautiful. you're looking at these. Wow, that is so. cool. I like that. Uh, now, this is the most subtle example and excellent example at that of skin tone that has a little bit more color in the mid-tone than in the shadow or in the highlight. So if you were to swatch this and get an RGB uh, uh, code for this color, it would have, it would have uh, more of an imbalance between the three channels, meaning a more saturated color. I'm getting off track. More saturated color in the mid-tones, even though it's just gray, there's still that very, very subtle presence of the appearance of more color in between light and shadow. I see it here. I see it here. And then when you have this bright colorless, colorless white gray on top of perfect. Awesome. So then you get this real nice understated. That's an artistic term for you. Skin yeah. tone. Beautifully that's it. done. That's nice. A wrap. Man, that that's hard to do. That is some beautiful, uh, beautiful form and anatomy on that one too. Nice work. Hair too. Look at the mid-tone on that hair. I got distracted right at the end. <laughs> <laughs> There's Ben. He's looking good. Look at that. Oh, the hair. We were looking at the hair. <laughs> yeah. Ah, that's good. We looked enough. We looked enough. That was sufficient. Thank you, everybody, for making this a fantastic resource for people to watch in the future. If anybody ever has questions about midtones, send them to this video so that, uh, you know, I, I, I don't hate the answer question, but I like to move on to the unanswered questions, you know, and so... You'll be helping me if you just point people toward this video when they ask about how you get things to look vibrant, translucent, alive. We touched on all those things with midtones. All right, we're going to get out of here. I got to get home. I got to pack up, get home for dinner, and uh, <clears throat> take care of my family. Thanks again, everybody. You can uh, see more stuff at muraljoe.com. There's, of course, more videos on YouTube. If you subscribe, I always love that. I always appreciate it when you help my numbers go up. helps us here. Thanks, Ben. For your help, brother. Awesome, awesome work. Hey, looking a pleasure. at the pleasure. Uh, Thanks comments, for everybody Brian. sending stuff in. Um, Good work with the cameras, Brian. Nice. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you later. I'm gonna see if I can find the off switch on this uh, live stream, and I uh, really appreciate you tuning in again. We'll see you guys later.